Hey day there, once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today folks, we're going to be diving into the chaos of World War 1 for the first time in the form of the newly released Battlefield 1. Now, I was originally planning to do a review for this game, until I realised that pretty much half the world got the early enlisters version of this game when I didn't, and it also turned out that that portion of player base that got the early enlisters version of the game happened to include the reviewers that tend to review games, and if I were to do a review now, it would probably end up sounding very similar to that of most other reviews out there already. But for all of those who are still looking for another opinion, this is undoubtedly the best sounding and looking Battlefield game of all time, quite possibly the best sounding and looking first person shooter of all time, which has really launched the series back into prosperity after the controversial outcomes that were Battlefield Hardline and the launch of Battlefield 4. Battlefield 1 brings about enough innovations and changes to keep the game fresh while bringing a gameplay style that will keep series veterans happy and saying, this is the battlefield I know and love. But to me folks, there is one thing, one addition that has seen its introduction in Battlefield 1 that has proven that DICE have gone above and beyond with this project. That they have really put in the effort to make this a special Battlefield game that will set the standard for titles to come. And that is the Operations Game Mode. Now, for all of those who aren't familiar with the Operations in Battlefield 1, they are effectively a combination of the popular Rush and Conquest game modes that have been in the series for a long time now. The defenders must defend sectors that contain two or three capture points that act the same way as the Conquest capture points do, where the attackers, surprise surprise, must capture both of these control points and hold them to capture the sector. Once the sector is captured, the battle is moved on to the next part of the map, which is very similar to how a Rush game would play out. A big difference between Operations and Rush, however, is that once the attackers control one of the capture points, they also gain a spawn point that gets them back into the action a lot, lot quicker, which also tends to speed up the action and make the battle for the final capture point of a sector just that much more intense. Another interesting dynamic about this mode is that the defenders can also recapture taken capture points, which can set up the game for a nice tug of war. However, as cool as that might all be, it's not what makes Operations so incredible. No, 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 no. The best part about Operations is that they are formed very much like a mini campaign, in the sense that each Operation has you play over multiple maps that are set within the same region. Once all sectors of a map are conquered, the game moves on to the next map, along with a short cutscene giving the map and the stage of the conflict you are about to fight in some context. And as far as game modes go, my hat goes off to the man or woman at DICE who came up with this one. You see, ladies and gentlemen, where I'm going with this is that the operations of Battlefield 1 are comparable to the Titan mode of Battlefield 2142 and the Conquest mode for, well, the entirety of the franchise, in the sense that operations now serve as a signature mode for the Battlefield franchise, a revolutionary one for that matter. While game modes like Rush and Air Superiority have been welcome additions to the Battlefield franchise, for the most part of the series there have been two game modes that have received the most amount of praise for being innovative and for changing the way that we play Battlefield. The first one of course being the original Conquest mode for being quite possibly the first ever online multiplayer experience to achieve all-out war on a large scale, and the Titan mode for providing a unique experience that meshed well with the futuristic setting of the 2142 Battlefield game. But now, I would argue that a third game mode has joined that list, that list of innovative game modes that have changed the way that we will be playing Battlefield for a long time now, that being Battlefield 1's operations. Something that separates it from the rest of the game modes in the library is how it treats the battles you partake in in-game as battles that build up towards a larger overarching objective. And that's kind of how real wars, including World War One, work. Every battle is a step towards a larger objective. And on that note, that's why this game mode works particularly well in this iteration of the series. The setting gives the game mode context 
next and makes the experience a whole lot more exciting to partake in. If the developers had tried to include this game mode into Battlefields 3 or 4, I would argue that it would have been a lot less effective due to the setting of those two games. I mean, take a look at the Carrier Assault game mode that was introduced in the Battlefield 4 Naval Assault DLC. That mode was confirmed to have taken much inspiration from the Titan mode that 2142 players know and love. Yet the Carrier Assault mode wasn't near as popular, probably because the Carrier Assault mode lacked the same flair and creativity that came from the original Titan mode. There was something about the time period, the setting, that made Titan mode special, and Carrier Assault, whilst it featured the same mechanics overall, just didn't feel the same. Battlefield 1 is set within the closing periods of the Great War, so the scale of operations does a really, really great job to convey the scale of the Great War overall. And I think that is why the operations mode in particular is such a huge success with the setting of Battlefield 1. When a sector is captured, you can hear the whistleblowers signaling the attackers to rush forward, followed by the screams of the charging army. It's little things like that that turn the operations game mode into into an experience, something that is beyond an ordinary game mode. It's an experience that you will find yourself sinking hours upon hours into. A single operation can turn into an hour long play session by itself, which just continues to immerse you in the setting of World War I that Battlefield 1 attempts to portray. And that is to me why Operations is the best part about Battlefield 1 by a long shot. Sure, the weaponry, vehicles, and overall gameplay of the game is fantastic, but Operations creates a perfect platform for that gameplay to mesh together to create the package that is Battlefield 1 and its Operations game mode. So folks, with all that said, that's going to conclude today's video. If you guys found today's video informative or entertaining or anything in between, feel free to backhand that like button, it would be greatly appreciated. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the Battlefield 1 Operations game mode. Do you like it? Don't you like it? Why do you like or dislike it? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. You guys know my opinion by now, so I'd love to hear what your opinions are of this game mode. Do you think it's a revolutionary game mode, or do you think it'll flop within a few weeks? Let me know down down below. Once again guys, if you enjoyed today's video and you find yourself backhanding that like button, then please do feel free to backhand that subscribe button, it would also be greatly appreciated. And as per always, all of my social media links are linked in the description down below if you want to get into contact with me. Once again guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, peace out, and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Have a good one.